This conference will now be recorded. And I'm also going to turn off my camera to save some bandwidth on the recording. Okay. So why, you know, why are we doing this? Um, it's, it's so important um, that we spend the time to actually go through this because um, there's a variety of reasons. First of all, as we all know, um, lighting and controls are completely intertwined. Uh, even with all the majors a long time ago, um, they had lighting divisions and controls divisions and, and the, the controls divisions all went away. So there's, I just wanna remind everybody, you know, the main reasons uh, generally are the, the rebates, which are very important to us all, um, because, you know, we've talked before, there's usually two buckets of rebates, one for fixtures and one with the fixtures with controls. So, um, you know, obviously the rebates are higher with controls. The second thing is if you are calling on uh, engineers or, or specifiers, um, they're gonna want controls uh, to be able to specify with our products. And the third thing is that if we are um, in a VE situation where let's say we have an acuity spec or a Cooper spec, whatever, and uh, it's been specified with controls, if you don't have controls, then um, you're out of luck. So um, it really is worthwhile. Now, some of the things that are in this particular training module, um, you know, go into setting up an account, uh, importing a PDF and this kind of thing. And what I thought we would do is have a separate meeting. Yeah, everybody's welcome to attend, but maybe there'll be one person in the agency or something like that. And what we'll do is we'll take some time. Uh, it won't be a PowerPoint and we'll actually go through, uh, we'll go on the website, we'll download the software, we'll um, set up the app on the phone, import a PDF and, and really show you just how easy it is to, to use this, uh, this product. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of controls packages out there where, first of all, um, in order to commission it and so on, you have to have the factory rep come out there. Uh, that, that's an added expense. Um, you know, they want to commission it and they want to charge for it. Uh, all this you don't have to do with, with, this, with this program. So um, it's really worth it. So let's just get to it. And uh, I'm, some of the slides that may be uh, obvious, I won't spend much time on. But let's talk about the three steps so that there's the planning. Um, we've said, you know, and, and we'll say again, the planning is half the battle, right? So um, this is gonna be done on your computer. Uh, you'll download the software and um, go ahead and uh, import the PDF and start it. There'll be the commissioning piece, which is um, obviously done on site. And in this case, um, by the way, on the computer, you can do it on any, um, any you know, uh, computer that you have. It uh, doesn't require a particular type of computer. Um, currently, when you do the commissioning on site, it, it does require an iOS um, uh, you know, device, which at this time would be either a um, iPad or an iPhone. I know a lot of people don't have, uh, everybody doesn't have an iPhone or an iPad. Hopefully you can get your hands on one uh, or the installer has one. But uh, suffice it to say that ultimately that'll roll out to the Google and the Droid and all that. Um, and then uh, also tuning, which is uh, optional. They can also be done uh, you know, on site and, and with the mobile app. So these are the three uh, major pieces of, of it. Okay, so there's, there's a difference between the portal and the app. And we just wanna briefly go over what you can do on, on the web portal and what you can do on the app. Uh, there are differences in function, et cetera. Um, but the first thing is you have to create an account and, and, and assign users and uh, create the project. That's, that's all pretty simple. And uh, like I said, we can have a special one where we'll do that live uh, uh, you know, in a special webinar. It wouldn't take very long at all. Um, so let's just take a look. Um, the web portal is the best place to start. Uh, it runs on any competing device, as I already mentioned. Um, the mobile app is the requirement, as I already said, for on-site commissioning, but there are differences between the two. So um, let's take a look at the uh, True Blue web portal. Now, you can see over here, this is the website location that you can go and set up your account. 
Um, anybody can do it. You don't have to have any special credentials. It's trueblue.mclonginc.net. And um, you can set up your user account. You can create your projects, areas, and zone, um, set controls, view report. And also, and we're gonna, we've already got it on the website, actually, on, on the landing page. Um, if you have a gateway, uh, you can do scheduling, which is optional, and a lot of other cool things like energy uh, monitoring, data mining, and occupancy sensing. So let's say we have uh, a building and there's a lot of conference rooms uh, in the building. Uh, some of them which are used a lot, some of them which are not used. Owners might want to know, you know, so occupancy sensing and in, in, in its heat map idea is a, a, a real important thing, especially on bigger projects. So um, on the TrueVoo mobile app, um, you can set up uh, your user account. And as we'll get into, you can set up your collaborators. So uh, we'll talk about who are collaborators. You can do a lot of the same things, create projects, create areas and zones. And uh, so the app is very, very useful. You can also, the main thing is you can um, commission devices, okay? So you can do a, a whole heck of a lot on the computer, but when it actually comes to commissioning, it's gonna have to be done, um, uh, you know, like I said, with an iOS device. So let's just take a quick run through on what does what. Okay, so you can obviously sign up and sign in on both the portal and the app. You can reset your passwords. Um, when we get new releases and software updates, that can uh, pretty much be done only on the, on, I'm not sure who's coughing, but if you're the person who's coughing, if you could uh, please uh, mute yourself, I'd appreciate it. So um, certain things, uh, you know, you can't do. Um, so any new notification software upgrades, that kind of stuff can only be done on the portal. Um, you can create projects. And uh, as I mentioned, the way we, we lay out a job is we, we import, um, let's say, a, a reflected ceiling plan or, or a floor plan, which is uh, going to be in, in the form of a JPEG. And uh, you can up that, upload that only on the web portal. Um, I will say that I've done this myself. I've set up my own account. And you may not know this, but you can quite easily convert any JPEG I'm sorry, back up, any uh, PDF to a JPEG. So you convert it and then you, you upload it into the, the program. Okay, so getting to the, uh, uh, the more of the features, um, you can, uh, on both items, the app and the portal, you can create and edit and remove areas. Um, you can uh, create zones, um, but on the app, um, you can't uh, create and edit profiles. That's only done on, uh, on a computer. And when it comes to customizing, that's done um, with the iOS device at the job site. So you can do, like I said, a whole lot on the computer before you even get to the job site. But um, once you're there, it, it needs to be commissioned. And if you're gonna set up any custom profiles, then you'll need to do that um, at the job site. So wow, okay, let's talk about uh, the mobile app. Um, you can see here that you can add and list devices, remove devices, edit devices, configure the devices. Um, you can check it out, make, you know, create, you know, run diagnostics. And um, we also said in ocean commissioning last time, um, I'll just touch on that for a minute. The ocean is like a, uh, an ecosystem of controls. And um, what's cool about these in, in ocean switches, is they don't require any AC power. When you, when you actually push the button on a switch, it creates kinetic energy, enough kinetic energy to send a radio signal to a device. So you could literally stick this on the wall where there was no box, no switch. And so that's all about the in ocean, their whole ecosystem that works on kinetic energy. So if there is no switch uh, available, um, you can just use an Inosin switch. And um, you can see that there's a lot of red X's for the web portal. Uh, so, you know, um, the, the, the mobile features are very important. Uh, you can list devices on your computer, but everything else uh, is on the portal. So um, once again, you flip the coin, there's um, a, lo a lot of things that can be done on the portal that can't be done on the app. Um, so 
Uh, on the app, you can um, manage collaborators, but virtually all these other elements like updating a project version, zone linking, if you want to link zones, uh, the gateway commissioning, when we introduce the gateway. Um, by the way, the gateway is required um, to uh, basically transmit in information over the internet. So you will need um, a gateway if you want to do any kind of remote monitoring, data mining, um, these kinds of things. Um, and then on the web portal, you can do uh, scheduling in multiple scenes. So can you, as you, can you answer a couple of questions on the chat, please, before you go too much further? Okay, um, I, I think that Pat is doing that. Pat, are you there? Yeah, David, we, we just currently have a question about the cost of the in ocean controls, how much more expensive it is. Um, it's going to not be any more expensive than a standard uh, switch that we would have. Um, and we can publish the pricing on that. Okay, moving on. Um, okay, so uh, reports and documentation. Um, let's say you have a campus or a school, there may be an energy manager. Um, and those people always want to understand what's happening. And so um, they can um, monitor the, the energy consumption or the savings, uh, energy profile and occupancy monitoring. All that needs to be done on the computer and it requires um, a gateway. Okay, as far as troubleshooting, As far as troubleshooting, um, most of that's going to be done by way of the app. And so you can configure scenes, you can test and control light sensing, um, daylight control, calibration. Uh, I want everybody to remember that uh, particularly in the indoor, uh, like in offices and conference rooms where there's windows, uh, we do daylight harvesting and it's what you would call continuous dimming or fluid dimming. So if you set it that you always want 40 foot candles in an office. If clouds come over, you're not going to notice any difference. Um, if it's a rainy day, you won't notice a difference. If it's a bright sunny day, you're not going to notice a difference because all that calibration is done and you won't see like any step dimming, which would be really obnoxious and, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, hard to work around if, if all of a sudden, you know, all you're doing is step dimming all the time. So it, it needs to be that fluid continuous dimming. And um, there's other things like, you know, sensor status, network setting, um, and uh, firmware updates, these kinds of things. Now, those are all done on the app. So um, I don't want to like, make this boring, but as you can see, there's a lot of different things that you can do on both, and some you can do only on the portal. And so uh, I invite you, when I send out the link, if you want to go over this, please do familiar yourself familiarize yourself with what you can do on both, but mainly the main things that you can do um, uh, only on the, on the web portal are the, the notifications of new, new releases, um, you know, help documents and manuals, and update the project version. So um, those are all important items. Um, once again, there's a, a, a lot of uh, things that you can do uh, in the planning phase. Yeah, both of those, you can uh, create the project, you can create and edit and remove, which I'll show. You can update a floor plan. Um, a lot of different things that you can do. Zone linking mentioned, um, only available on the portal. And in the commissioning, you would expect, as I already mentioned, since you really have to have a, a mobile device at the job site in order to commission it, uh, most of the commissioning, if not all of it, is done by way of uh, the app. The only thing that you can really do in the commissioning process is uh, list the devices um, before you get there. And uh, then, you know, the rest of it is done by way of, of the app. And then tuning, okay, once again, this is uh, some fine tuning at the job site by the, uh, the person that's commissioning the job, typically an installer, or it might be somebody at the agency that we have a, you've appointed as the go-to person, um, you know, to visit a job site or commission a job. Uh, as I mentioned before, you don't need like a factory person from ATG to get on an airplane and come to your job site and charge a bunch of money to do this, um, which is um, a big, a big advantage, uh, you know, um, compared to a lot of other control systems where 
um, they want to be intimately involved in the whole thing and it's going to cost. So anyway, um, with the mobile app, you can test and control, check the status of sensors, you can do the, the diagnostics and um, pretty much do all the commissioning. Now, uh, on connected devices, um, on the portal, you can schedule and make scenes. You can commission the gateway. You can set up energy profiles. And as I mentioned, you can monitor energy. So, you know, somebody's going to spend a mo uh, money uh, on a control system. Why are they doing that? You know, they really would like to be able to see in real time, wow, I am, this is really paying off. I'm getting a major ROI. Look at, at the amount of energy I'm saving. And they can only really get an understanding, get their the brain around that by monitoring the job. And uh, you'll need to do that from the computer with the use of a gateway. So let's move on to um, project planning uh, using the web portal and the app. So um, as we've said, um, basically good planning is halfway to success. I mean, you do a good job planning, everything is bound to work out great. So what are the key elements? Number one, we have to understand, it's just like anything. It's just like a, a lighting project. What's the customer want? You know, what's the application? How many foot candles do they want? And make sure that there's a good understanding. Um, and study the project. So um, if we have a, an application engineer that's done a reflected ceiling plan or a layout, you know, obviously you want to take a look at that um, and understand, you know, how does this job set up for zones? Um, and, and areas, okay? So, you know, we might have an outdoor, an indoor. We have, in the indoor, we have, um, you know, the warehouse or the distribution center. And in, in the uh, offices, we have different uh, zones. So you kind of have to understand how does this, uh, this project lend itself to control? And of course, uh, after a little bit of practice and so on, you um, obviously have to understand the, uh, the control system. So the planning steps, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. We've already talked about it. You have to go online um, and set up an account um, and then also uh, go to the, uh, the app store on, uh, at Apple and, and download the app on your mobile device. So in terms of the checklist, um, we have to select, edit, or create uh, control pro profiles. And, and what's cool about this, and as you'll see, is there's a lot of uh, predefined control profiles that you can select, select from. So um, it's as easy as a drop-down menu, and um, it's very simple that you don't have to like get really deep into it and create um, all, you know, all these uh, profiles on your own. You can just uh, you know, click and, and, and point and pretty much uh, go with the uh, pre-selected. And you have to understand the available scenarios, when to use them, uh, properly configure it, and um, consider the differences in planning grid and non-grid uh, installations, which is tuning, which you may not um, basically get that, that deep into it. So uh, the account sign-up, as I mentioned, this is a, a screenshot of the, um, the app and also of the web portal. And uh, you basically go on, uh, all you need to do is put in your email, and your password and, and log in. Uh, it's that simple. Uh, but I will, just, just like everything else these days, a lot of us have a, a million passwords, so don't forget your password. But if you do, um, as you can see here, uh, you can always um, go back and get your password and change it. Okay, so this is just a little simulation. Um, one of our, our friends at McWong, uh, set this up, and you can see that it, it, it's just so easy. He, he just uh, typed in his name and so on, and uh, away he goes. Okay, so um, once you uh, are on and you've got it set up, you can see that on the, um, the web portal, you'll have all your projects here. And on your uh, iPhone or, or iPad, you'll have um, the very, it'll be vertical. And there's another little, uh, this is how we create a project. You simply add one, you put in the latitude and longitude of the job site, and you start, you start creating. 
Uh, so it, it's uh, it's really cool. You can, as I mentioned, uh, okay, so I'll, I'll go ahead and go forward on this. Okay, so user rules. Let's talk about who does what, okay? Um, so we have end users, we have installers, we have managers and owners, okay? Selecting the proper role for collaborators. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, selecting, yeah. okay, yeah, selecting the proper role uh, makes a big difference because you don't want people that aren't authorized going in and making changes and so on. Um, so somebody's got their mic open. If you would once again double check, double check your mic. Uh, or your phone and, and mute it. Um, okay, so, so selecting the proper role is important. Uh, it helps keep control over the project. It prevents unauthorized users making changes, and it, it makes it easier to hand over. Okay, so uh, you can easily this. add. Okay, I'm going to have to mute. Well, we had a conversation about it because these are. I'm going to have to mute everyone. So uh, real quick, Pat, can you still hear me? I think so. Everybody can still hear me? Yes, David, I can hear you. Okay, good. So I had to mute everybody, I'm sorry. Uh, it was just too much feedback. Okay, so uh, once you have your project, then you can assign your collaborators. It's quite simple. Um, you, you know, type in and it, uh, it, it uh, is very easy to do. Okay, so um, here you've done it. You've, uh, you've got uh, uh, the owner, okay, who is ultimately in charge. And then you have managers. Managers are allowed to make changes and can run the project. Um, and you have an installer, and then you have an end user. So um, all these people have different roles, and um, you don't want to make sure that, you know, like for example, an end user, uh, is really set up as a manager, and they may not be savvy at all. Um, and sure enough, they can they can make changes. Sorry. So, okay, the owner is the owner. Um, that's the that's the chief. Okay, managing collaborators. Generally, it's going to be somebody designated as a manager um, on the um, commissioning. Uh, certainly the owner can do that. Um, any manager can do that. And for example, a contractor or an installer um, is uh, also, um, you know, allowed to, to make changes. Um, and then in terms of control, okay, obviously, you know, the owner, the manager, and the installer, but ultimately in the end, the end user is going to be given the ability to control the system, um, um, you know, uh, so that they can do what they want and get done. Okay, so um, more more of the functions. Um, the the owner can transfer. You can transfer ownership. So let's just say uh, the original owner says, "Okay, I'm done with this project. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Pat Treadway, and he's going to be the new owner." Only the owner can do that. Okay, but um, managers they have a lot of authority to do things. They can access. Uh, they can grant access to other collaborators. They can invite users. It can remove users. If somebody's not playing by the rules, um, you can be removed very easy, uh, and you can change user roles. The, the, the managing um, and the commissioning, you know, as we said, everybody can do that, including the installer, and there's a, there's a lot of different things, as you can see here. But the main thing is to set it up, make sure it's working right, and ultimately the control, which would be, um, you know, the, uh, the end user, they can navigate through the project, um, in zones uh, on a floor plan, trigger on and off scenes, these kinds of things that you would expect. So the owner, let's just talk about, uh, once again, the owner is, is the user who creates the project. There can only ever be one owner. So we're not gonna have more than one owner. And they can never be removed. Like, so a manager gets mad one day and says, I'm gonna get rid of the owner. No, can't do that. Um, so there's only one owner and they can't be removed. However, they can transfer ownership. They have access to all the functions 
And uh, only the owner can remove the project actually from the database. As we showed um, on a previous screen on the web portal, if somebody wants to delete a project, only the owner can do that. Okay, the manager. Uh, the manager can be invited and removed by the owner. There can be many managers. So let's say we have uh, multiple areas of, of a project and you know, we're gonna have outdoor, we're gonna have indoor, we're gonna have you know, storage, whatever. You can assign separate managers to manage these different areas. Um, and they also manage, can manage other collaborators, like we said, installers. Uh, they can control the device and uh, they can leave the project. The installer, um, of course, that's a really critical piece, can be invited and removed by the owner uh, or the manager. Um, there can be many installers. So let's say, once again, this is a large project and you have different install. You don't want to be there for a year setting this thing up. So you're going to have multiple installers working in different areas of the building. Um, and uh, they can control all the devices, but they cannot see the ma or manage collaborators. Um, they can obviously leave the project if they choose to. And then in the end, we have the, the end user, the person that decided to spend the money and save energy, and uh, they can be obviously invited. Um, there can be many end users. So, um, you know, hey, everybody in the building might be an end user. Uh, they can control all the devices, uh, but they cannot manage the project or change things. In other words, somebody who's not savvy, we just don't hand them the keys to the car and say, hey, enjoy, enjoy the car. Now, you know, they have to be, uh, there has to be some limitations. And uh, so essentially they're able to use the system, but they can't make major changes. Now, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here at all, but just going back to one of the previous modules, you have a project, and within that project, you're gonna have areas, uh, uh, major areas, parking lot, warehouse, office areas. Now, within those areas, you're gonna have zones. So in the case of a warehouse, you might have, you know, 10 aisles. Every aisle can be a zone. And let's say you have 10 high bays, um, per aisle. Well, every one of those high bays is a device. So the main things that you're going to have is either a, um, a sensing device, a true sensor, or a, uh, a modular controller, a, a, a radio controller that uh, actually works in the system but does, is, and, and it can receive the radio signals. It saves a lot of money because you don't need to put a, um, a sensing device on every fixture. You can have a, a controller and it, it costs about half as much as a sensor. It's just a great way to save money. And um, then um, in terms of other devices, you're definitely gonna have some, maybe some switches for manual override. So you can always turn the system on, turn it off, but that's the basic structure, project, area, zone, and device. So we can create areas um, and you know, so this is done. Um, you can have uh, your you name and so on. Um, and then you plan the zones. Okay, so uh, we have sensors, controllers, and, switcher, and switches. Um, I've already uh, basically gone over what a zone is. It's a group of devices that operate with the same control strategy. That's, that's the main point to remember. Okay, so all the fixtures in a particular zone are gonna operate on the same control st strategy. Um, you can also, as I mentioned, split up larger installations into many zones. So control profiles. These are defined lighting control behaviors uh, for multiple devices. So spaces that are uh, that essentially managed. So, um, you know, all the offices, for example, may be on the same uh, profile. And, and what, are, what are the various elements? It's vacancy, vacancy sensing when nobody's there, occupancy sensing with, with daylight harvesting, vacancy sensing with daylight harvesting, or you can create a new uh, profile. Um, but each zone must have some type of profile, right? Uh, so um, anyway, you can reuse profiles throughout the project, which makes it easy. So you might say, okay, I've got 10 offices here and um, 
I can easily reuse that profile for all 10 offices. It really uh, makes it easy to set up the job. And unless somebody has a particular um, uh, you know, concern. So, so here's your project. Here's your profiles. You may have a, a, a conference room, a storage room. In the conference room, there could be two meeting rooms. So here's a pro tip. Uh, setting, let's see here, setting one profile for all meeting rooms will allow you to quickly propagate changes to um, all the zones. Once again, here's your example of a controlled profile. Um, we've set up this control profile as conference room number one, and we can actually propagate that across all the meeting rooms. And then the supply closet, <laughs> in this case, would obviously be um, on a different profile that we wouldn't use in the conference room profile. Um, okay, I think we're making a lot of progress here. So um, the main scenarios um, that you'll see, uh, you know, there's a template of parameters that can be assigned. And uh, here they all are, once again, um, everything from vac vacancy sensing to manual control. And you go ahead and set that up. Uh, and then the parameters. Okay, what are the parameters? How does the, the fixtures uh, in that area behave? So multiple parameters can be changed to customize the behavior in the zone. So you have your default high. Um, okay, um, default light level, I'm sorry. So let's say that you, you wanna have 40 foot candles in the office at all time. That can be your, your default light level. You set that up. Um, you can have a high and low end trim. Um, so the high end trim is something that's um, of particular interest. Um, instead of having the light level be at 100%, uh, the high end trim can be set at 80%. So nobody complains. Maybe if somebody does complain, uh, you could set it up, but um, let's say that you set the high-end trim to 80%. Everybody's happy. You're, you're saving 20% right off the bat. And um, some of the other things like a power up, how does it behave? And then uh, the control phases, uh, you know, when it's occupied, uh, uh, prolonged, vacant, light level, timeout, these types of things. Um, and then manual override for timeout. Okay, so here's an example of um, a zone that's been created. There is some um, software built in here that's showing how to create it. So you've, you're, you're uh, your storage facility has now been set up. Um, you can, uh, once again, name it, and then set up the profile of how does it behave in there, okay? Okay, then we move on to the pantry. The pantry is different, right? Uh, we're not gonna call it a storage uh, room. But we could, you set it up, you, you uh, get the default light level in terms of foot candles or percentage, you can do both, the fade time and the power up behavior. Once again, we have the low end trim, which would be off zero and the maximum high end trim is set to 80 in this case. Okay. So, um, trying to operate. Now here's the corridor. Once again, it's uh, uh, gonna be removed. So this is an example of how easy you can remove um, uh, a zone within a project with a simple click and it's confirmed. Okay, so previously this was the uh, uh, corridor and now it's, it's gonna be taken out of the project. Now, you can even remove a project. <laughs> okay, for some reason, uh, that, you know, uh, 
either the job is over or um, you know it's, it's been put on hold and you're, or you want to start over, it's very simple to um, remove projects as well, just with a click of a button. So let's say we want to update a project. Um, there's new software available. You can see here that uh, there was a simple a click. Um, and uh, when you update this project, it tells you what you're going to get. And um, you get more support documents. You get a lot of different things. And you update. OK. So that's an example of, uh, here's another way to update a project. Um, in this case, once again, if you click on the information, it's going to tell you what you're going to get if you go ahead and do this. And planning and scheduling. So scheduling allows for an automatic recall of predefined zones. Well, that makes sense, right? If I, uh, if I want to use the same thing every time, then there's no need to, you know, redo it, right? We, we're just going to have every day is, at a certain time, a certain um, schedule is going to, uh, uh, you know, be in play, and we need to, we need to set that. So um, it, it requires a, a gateway to do scheduling. That's the only thing. And um, if you work, it works with multiple scenarios, and it triggers one of the predefined scenes based on, on that. So, um, this is uh, the end of a long PowerPoint. I'm going to go, go ahead and, uh, you know, basically end this. And uh, we want to take questions. So um, I'm back on. Um, and we'll leave the recording on for the time being. Um, Pat, was there uh, many qu uh, questions? It looks like 15 different questions. Uh, just a few questions. Uh, I was uh, adding a few comments as you went along to, to fill in a few things that I, might have been a question for the folks. Um, I think the group is interested in uh, when uh, pricing might be available. And then one of the questions was about linking to other lighting control brands. Um, so uh, to that second one, I'll, I'll address that. Um, it's a Bluetooth system, so uh, talking to other Bluetooth devices is possible. It should be checked out beforehand. Um, the McLong uh, sensors and products are a bit agnostic to, to what lighting uh, brand is attached to it, as long as it's using a 0 to 10 uh, dimming and there's a 12 volt power source. Uh, so. Uh, you could use this if you had um, a, a fixture that you needed for a special application and you added it to a, an ATG lighting package. Uh, shouldn't be a problem connecting the two into uh, a single system. Um, but Dave, I'll let you address the, uh, the, the cost question. Okay, so uh, I have this right here. Um, everybody should have received uh, our April pricing, which we, we gave. And uh, so now we have exterior, interior, tubes, and controls. Uh, so we have a new tab for controls. And uh, this is what it looks like. If anybody did not get the pricing, um, please let me know. But the pricing has already been published. OK? All right. Anything else? Uh, this one went over a little longer today. I'm sorry. But um, it, it was uh, a pretty long. PowerPoint, sorry about that. But yeah. uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the recording here. So yeah. we'll stop recording. Yes. Yeah, it looks like we did it. Did